Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to actually show you all my other hobby that I have. I started doing a lot of handwork from a very young age. And these are just one of my crochings that I actually done and I did a lot of lot of crocheting and knitting in the past but these are just few that I just recently uh, done for the winter. These are the few items that I actually made this winter. Uh, this is a hat with a beautiful flower in the center and then another hat which can give you a lot of shade when you're outside and this is another hat that has its own scarf so it's actually called the hat of the scarf and there's another beautiful hat that's actually made with little ears you normally find the little children's using these types yes and this is also another top when tops became in fashion where the uh, the back is sort of uh, longer than the front. So these, this top was made with a finer needle. Uh, this is one of a throwaway over your t-shirts. It's actually joined into two squares that are made. Very simple. And uh, I joined the squares and then I formed a hand for your hands and then the neck hole and then to bring it together I put in a drawstring so when using a long sleeve uh, tops inside for the winter you can just use this as a throw on the top these are the needles that I'm very fond of to do crouching this is for a slightly thicker wool this is for the medium wool and this is for actually for doing cotton I did a lot of uh, cotton doilies and tea coasters. I like to give out my items as gift because when gifting a person, I feel it's part of me and my beautiful work for them. Uh, Ma, what size needles you got there? Uh, this uh, thicker one is four and a half and the medium one is three and a half and the cotton one is 125. This is uh, my knitting stick that was actually gifted to me for my birthday by my niece. And this is what I made. In fact, it makes uh, lovely throws and using very thick cotton, you can make lovely scarves. That was a nice, beautiful gift given to me. Now I'm gonna show you all the basic, how to start off a scarf. Okay, because these colors are unique and beautiful to make a bright looking scarf, so I'm going to show you all the basics. This is a ounce of wool and this is how I actually open my wool because I don't like my wool running on the floor. So this is how I pull it up from the inside. I'm fond of this thick, thick needle. This is the end. So I put it over my finger and I grip it with my thumb. And you can see I never form a knot because I'm going to show you all how I actually knot my uh, wool. I put my needle in through, I turn it around, and then I pull, and there's a knot. So this uh, round loop is actually called a stitch. So this is what we do. We actually learn to hold our wool with the thumb and the finger and turn it around and pull. There's a stitch. Okay, I'll go very slow again. You turn it around and pull, then that's your stitch. Okay, now that I showed you all the basics uh, to making your loop, normally this is called a chain to start off 
maybe a scarf. Uh, head, heads go differently, but let us start with the scarf. Okay, this is the scarf that I made for my daughter. Uh, I actually made it into a long scarf and then I actually doubled it up. So when she puts it to go to work, it doesn't cause a hanging irritation. So all that what she does is to just put it round and round a neck and then it stay on a neck all the time without falling on either the sides. So let us really actually make that type of a scarf. So this is how you actually open your work. It's very easy to open your work. All you have to do is to pull and then undo themselves. And then it will come back to a normal thread. So we're actually going to work with a 20 uh, stitch. Again, I'll start pushing my needle through, turning it around and then pulling it that actually forms its own knot. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine, nineteen, twenty. So this is looking quite small because the wool is slightly thinner. So let us go for more. Maybe give it another. Let's go for an even number. That will be about 28. So that's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. This is what the chain is called and I think this size is okay to start up a scarf. You can actually go looser on your chain, but if you can pull it tighter, it's it will give a firm finish. So now, although I have 28, I'm going to pull another two chain and then go into my 28th loop and this is how we start a stitch. The pattern will come after when I show you how you normally start a stitch. I have three loops on my needle, then I will turn my, my string, I pull in two, and then I have another two. Then I do it again and pull till I get a single. So this is a stitch. So again I turn, and I will go exactly into the next hole and pull and thereafter I'll do the very same thing that's two and that's a single and then we can do continue so it will all come to one single you can see one single but you have to do every loop in the same manner you go into a loop, you pull, you have three, and you pull, and then you have two, then you come into a single. This is the basics of crouching. But if you actually want to go in as these pattern, so you can, first when you get very used doing your singles, then this is what you do when you go in for patterns. If you want to put two into one loop, so you miss two chain, and then you go into the second, so it doesn't cause it gathering up too many, instead of coming, if you gather it up too many, it becomes too flare. So this is a pattern. So that's what you do. You miss your two, and you put in another two stitch into the two and that becomes one pattern and then if you want like a cis, cis uh, shell pattern you if you are using like 
uh, three, so you have to miss three and go into that loop and then you pull, you can go into that same uh, stitch again and then you have that two, then you can, if you're using, making a seashell, then you add a chain, then you go into the same loop again and you do the same thing as first but going four times into one stitch so you see this actually forms it's more like this how it forms a shell uh, if you actually come to work with the basics then you can actually buy pattern books and follow up if you know the basics then you can actually follow up a lot of patterns how you learned all of this, ma? Uh, I was quite a young girl when I should uh, actually play around making uh, knitting sticks with wires, with thick uh, wires and making it form into uh, knitting sticks and play with a uh, lot of wool. Okay, finally, Let's start all over again and get going to do our scarf. This is how, again, my fingers, I place my wool and grab it with my thumb. And then in goes my needle in this way and turn it all around and then pull it out. That's your knot. Okay, and that's a loop of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, 28 but we're going 30 to make the other two stand as a chain so we leave that two and then we're going into our 28th hole and this is what we're doing we are pulling two and having two and come into the single okay let us make our plain and simple scarf and thereafter we can do other things with a lot of patterns. This is just the basics. So you go in to every loop doing the same thing repeatedly. I am going very slow, then you can watch First practice how to use your wool around your fingers and then your needle. You can make a lot of mistakes. It's very easy to undo your wool. You can see it has uh, different colors coming in, so you don't have to use different types of wool. You use your same wool with different colors in it. See how it take, took, a f uh, took a form with different colors. You will take notice that my ball of wool is not bouncing around because it's actually opening from the inside out.
Now we're coming towards the end. I am doing this very slowly, then you can watch me. And that I go quite fast. Actually, I actually watch TV and do my coaching too. So this is the end. You can see, this is one row of my crouching. Now I had to go upwards. So I make it, this is the end, I make an extra chain. I turn my work. And then when you turn your work, you can see your loops has formed a pattern. So you are going to use the same loops. So that's the end and then there's the first loop. So I'm going in the next row. It's not difficult because you can see these are the loop that formed the pattern. Okay, I'm on the next end. So we have already got two rows of stitch. You can see. So we use the extra loop and then we turn our work so you can see the loops are made in this so it's not difficult so you push it push it into the same loops there's another color that's coming in now so i found this wool in the local wool shop I think it's called the yarn tree. Um, each uh, 100 gram uh, ball of yarn is 27 rand. And my mom says it's going to take about two balls of yarn to make a scarf, which will then be basically a scarf for 55 rand. Well, and all the effort that goes into knitting the scarf. But the moment you cut, uh, use with your placing of your needle and the thread, it don't take much of uh, your time. Then you get so used that you just, when you get started with something, you will really want to complete it. Then there's another end. You can see this is going to be the size of the scarf. And there's another end. We pull in a chain and turn it around. With so many different types of colors, it's going to make a very beautiful scarf. And in the, when we're finishing off, we can actually edge it off with some pattern and it'll look cute. Okay, I'm almost done with the 100 gram of uh, wool and I'm going to join in another 100 gram, but you can see how far the 100 gram has taken me to. And uh, this is the length, maybe it's one and a half. We are actually going for two meters. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is to actually show you all how I join in my next uh, wool to the same wool. We usually do it towards, when we're going towards the end of a line. Okay, you can see. Now because it came in the center, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually, these things are very easy to actually uh, pull out the work okay then I'm going to break my wool and as I showed you how I pull my wool from the inside so I'm going to join yeah we actually make a knot now why we do it in the sides, so when we're edging our scarf, 
it goes way in between uh, their work. So I'm going to continue now till it come to my final length and then I will show you, I will end up my scarf and thereafter I'll tidy it up from the outside to the inside. Okay everyone, I'm sort of going to finish off my scarf that I started. Uh, it actually took uh, about 150 gram of wool to come to this length. I will open and show it. I'm quite comfortable having it around my neck. It's keeping me warm. And thereafter, I'm going to decorate it. Uh, I'm going to show you all the simple finish, but uh, I will thereafter decorate it with little flowers or make it looking fancy so it can be actually given as a gift. And in the meantime, you all must practice with yours needle and the way I showed you all to use your wool. And when it comes to crocheting and knitting, uh, the pattern books are very easy to follow. But uh, whenever you need to ask something like making of a hat or a pattern, you can always be welcome to ask. I can help you out. Just drop a comment in the comment section for this video and uh, my mom will respond. Okay. It, uh, this scarf actually took me about one and a half hour, but my time wasn't wasted because I was busy watching my program at the same time. So I caught up on my program. And uh, this is a very warm way of staying warm in the winter and staying indoors. And I'm just going to show you all the last of this, how I end it, and thereafter. Okay, here comes the end of the scarf. This is the last. So this is how we actually end our scarf. I will break off my wool and pull it through. And then, actually when I have whole knitting kept and no more of use, it's very easy to undo the this knot that we actually form, see, it'd be very easy. So we pull and then thereafter, we can actually reuse our wool. It's very, very easy to pull out, see? And then it's very easy to reuse, use the same wool from an old crouching or knitting and it comes with back brand new. show you all the length that I made now. And I'll tidy it up and then I'll ruben it. And whoever's birthday or someone coming near, coming to visit us, they'll have a nice lovely gift. You can see this is the plain and simple scarf that I showed you. Actually, with the remaining wool, I can make a matching hat. There you are. Thanks for watching.